Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Art of Cybersecurity series. I'm the host and creator, Chirag Joshi. And if you don't know me, I've been building, managing, running cybersecurity programs in multiple countries across various industries. If you want to know more about me, you can go on my website, chiragdjoshi.com, or find me on LinkedIn. So the purpose of this, this talk series, if I call it that, is essentially exploring the creative and the human side of our cybersecurity industry. There are plenty of tools, technologies, and processes out there which you can find and derive value from. There are lots of great webinars, podcasts that you can listen to, but I wanted to focus on the art and the creative side. And what I mean by that is something that we'll talk about today is one of the topics is art of communicating in a crowded marketplace and art of communicating cybersecurity by cutting through the noise. Today, I am privileged, and I, I don't use that word lightly, I am privileged to be joined by Chris Tubbage. I have known Chris for a few years now, but I always consider him to be, and I'm actually grateful to consider him as a friend. I'll read out his formal bio, but I just have to start with that. He's a master of what he does. The way he communicates cybersecurity is something which is inspirational and something that we all can learn from. So Chris is a director and executive editor for My Security Media and a principal security consultant with Amlick House. He has over 30 years of experience and is multi-certified security professional with a formative 15 years policing background, including as a homicide detective and Australian Crime Commission senior investigator. Chris is also the author of Corporate Security in Asia Pacific Region, Security Risk Management in Corporate Governance and publisher of Cyber Risk Leaders by Shaman Tan, Chris is host of MySec.tv, Cybersecurity Weekly Podcast, and editor of Australian Cybersecurity Magazine and Cyber Le Risk Leaders Magazine. That was a lot, but it still does not do justice to the man. So I will bring him on now. Chris, welcome to the Art of Cybersecurity. How are you, Hi. my friend? Drag, very good to join you. Thank you very much. Normally, I'm on the, uh, that side, so it's different to be interviewed this time. No, absolutely. I mean, you, you've been enough on, on where I am. And I think there are lots of learnings from that, which, which I'm keen to explore with you. Yep. So Chris, uh, the topic for today, as we've discussed, is the art of communicating in a crowded marketplace, or let's simply put art of communicating cybersecurity by cutting through the noise. So in your uh, years of experience, hundreds of interviews that you've done over the years, help me understand, like, what were some of the key attributes of effective security communication that stood out to you? What, what were the interviews that you did that make you feel like, aha, this was, this was really good because there were two or three things that came out of it. What were the patterns of those effective communicators? Um, and I, I suppose the first one is I'll get my microphone here. That way you can actually hear me. Um, look, it, I don't think there's any interviews that really stand out uh, as, oh, wow, I took a, a lot from that. There's a, there is a, there are always uh, something you take out of an interview. Uh, I always go in there with that open mind and mm -hmm. a uh, sort of a learning mindset and uh, sort of exactly what you're doing here, uh, reaching out to say, we want to have a discussion. And, uh, you know, I think the main thing, though, in terms of uh, an interview, you still need to know who your audience is uh, and what that purpose is. So you always need that purpose. I have done a lot of talking on uh, sort of communication, crisis communication uh, and the like. And it's a bit of a science, really, at the end of the day. And uh, there are good communicators uh, out there, obviously. Um, but I wouldn't say I've, t I've just, yeah, I suppose going back to the question of is there any takeouts or, or standouts, I wouldn't say no, but I, I do like uh, sort of interviews where I don't know much about the topic. Um, mm -hmm. And if we come back to sort of security and cybersecurity, I've learned so much on cybersecurity. You mentioned I sort of started in policing. I've always had a bit of a technical interest and, you know, a bit of a nerdy, nerdy uh, sort of approach. But even from the policing perspective, you know, I've learned so much over the last uh, few years on cybersecurity. It's why I do what I do, um, because I, I learn. I'm learning all the time, and I think that's the, the key point. Uh, and you've also seen the industry change, particularly over the last sort of 10 years. Yeah. You know, and it's becoming much more professional now. There, you know, we talk about C-suite, uh, CISOs. You know, these are senior business leaders, which before, you know, would have been an IT system administrator or something like that. 
sort of 10 years ago. And I think uh, security, cyber security, I, I almost, I didn't see it coming, but I knew that uh, it was going to become prominent, you know, even from my uh, early studies, um, that security, and even in the, the situation now here in Australia, you've got uh, floods, disaster, disasters, pandemics, uh, and then now we've got a, a war in Europe. All that is security related, uh, and you can see it converging, uh, and cybersecurity comes into play as well. So no doubt there'll be sort of scams on, on the flood relief. Uh, there'll be some sort of cyber scams, but we're also at cyber war. And so the prominence of what we talk about and sort of the, the way that the audience will listen uh, as well will also changes over time. So yeah. Yeah, I don't know if I answered your question, but it's uh, I always come in with interest, I suppose, in terms of uh, doing interviews and what I seek from people. Yeah, and 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 when you think about it, so you open, you come in with an open mind, with the, the learning mindset, keeping keeping uh, you know with, with things that change so dramatically, keeping an open mind to those. But in terms of the folks you interview and the ones who actually you come across as feeling really delighted by the, the conversation yeah. just because you learned something, your audience learned something. What do you reckon uh, were the two or three things that, that you can kind of point towards? Because you got clearly done hundreds of these. So you must have seen a pattern when somebody starts talking and holds your interest. What yeah. are the two or three things that make that happen? Um, I think... I've been doing a lot of uh, ac 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 I've been doing a lot of academics uh, recently, uh, particularly on reports and book reviews. Um, I do find that they tend to uh, be very good at communicating because uh, they're obviously mm -hmm. lecturing, they're talking to their students. Yeah. Uh, they also have a very deep knowledge uh, as well that they can draw on. And so authors uh, and report write and, and report authors, I find are particular uh, good to, to speak to. One is you have a document or a, a book to talk to. Um, and But I think that's the, the beauty of writing a book uh, or publishing is you have a structure and you tend to think in that way too. And it gives you that deep knowledge. So I, I would say authors are good. So uh, even from this audience, um, for this, communicating, how to communicate security and cybersecurity, I would be starting with writing. You, know, you need to be able to write. Right um and write well and again that's a science in its own right it's a real art to to be a good writer um so but then you'll you'll speak and you'll draw on that body of knowledge that you develop from your writing you'll find your speaking will improve as well um so yeah i would that that's a good answer i would imagine authors make excellent uh communicators in terms of speaking uh, and uh, interviewing that is such a that's such a really good actionable takeaway, right, Chris? And and you, in, in my view, I don't think you need to like a book is great, but but get get used to writing something, an article, yep. a blog post, put your ideas in a concise format right. because that'll challenge you. And having been through the author journey myself, you know, it's amazing how how much it disciplines and challenges you when yep. you have to make your message concise and also package it in a way that. A book has a start and the finish, an article has a start and the finish. So I think how we start and end it also makes a difference. So it makes you think in a structured way. So that's really good insight. Chris, the other, other area which I was keen to explore with you is, uh, as I think from a cybersecurity practitioner's perspective, uh, I, I feel the industry, and this is globally as well as Australia, the industry now is getting crowded, both from a vendor's perspective and services perspective. You have a lot of folks there, a lot of product services being launched on almost a daily basis. So in such a crowded marketplace, what are your tips to get the, the right people involved, get the right message concisely, sharply? Uh, what are the tips that you would offer based on what you see? Uh, potentially from a vendor's perspective, I would say, again, this is what we do. We, we have our, our, our mantra is uh, educate, entertain, uh, and uh, I can't remember what the third one was now. <laughs> um, but, but education is the first one. Uh, yeah. And I think that's the, the biggest one where we, we, we get approached by, to vend by vendors to say, look, uh, we want to run a webinar or we want to run an advert or whatever it is. Uh, I always, my first advice is, okay, how educational is this? You know, so mm -hmm. if it's a webinar, we can talk to a product, you can do a product demo, but it's, we've got to make it educational. And I think in the current environment, you're right. 
very uh, busy period. Everyone jumped online doing webinars uh, because we couldn't do physical events. But we cut through. It's why we almost. That's why we continued with uh, MySec TV as well, because it's a learning exercise. So as long as, as from a branding perspective, you've got to be able to share first, uh, rather yeah. than just get a give. Um, so I think it's uh, that would be the key one, um, and and consistent as well. You can't just do a one off and expect everyone to, to come running. Uh, I think you've got to apply what you are doing consistently uh, with integrity as well. So there's, there are vendors out there that have pretty limited <laughs> integrity. Um, there's a lot of people out there with pretty limited integrity as well. And I think to be in the game for a long time uh, and build a brand, whether that's personal or, or a vendor or in, in whatever context, really, to build a brand takes time. Uh, and uh, I will also say that it comes with integrity because if without that integrity, you won't last. Yeah. Um, you know, eventually you'll come unstuck. So oh, well said. So uh, be willing to share, educate, have integrity in how you go about doing that. And also, you know, don't expect overnight successes, right? Like right. work on it, professional, personal, create some credibility behind your yeah. behind your brand so people trust you. No, I think that's, that's really well said, Chris, because I... I do think the pressures of uh, and the hype sometimes that comes with cybersecurity. Everybody wants a, a slice of it, yep. and and uh, and I think that sometimes leads to questionable practices. And I personally get some of those emails myself, and and I I'm left wondering, what are you thinking? Like, yeah. um, like what kind of response do you expect? Do you really expect this to actually get converted into a sale? So I I think that's well said. The other thing, Chris, which I, I'm keen to get your thoughts on, and this whole concept is around, you know, the art, right? So the creativity, you can't always have a formula for this, but but there are things where you can be creative about is, as a topic, and, and you in your work, uh, both as a communicator and as a practitioner, uh, has seen security from different angles, physical, cyber, the convergence angle, it's a complex topic. And, and to your point earlier, there are all eyes on this topic, like from a cyber perspective, I know in the financial services sector, APRA CPS 234 changed the game. And you're starting to see the same thing play out with the, the Saki Act and other things in, yep. from a regulatory perspective. So you have that tension now, but the, the challenge still remains is in your view, how do you simplify this inherently complex topic? It's not, a, it's not by itself a fun topic. But how do you how do you simplify it enough that decision makers can actually have the right information to one engage with you, but two we have confidence, and three finally execute on on the recommendations that you provide them. So so what are your thoughts on that? Well, I think if it's for a board, uh, you're you're talking you've got to simplify it down to a number or a rating, you know, in terms of that risk. Uh, I think that's why we've you know you talk about maturity models now. And I think that's, you can apply that even in the physical security sense as well. How mature mm. uh, are you as an organization in terms of your security practices? So um, we, we covered a, a session a week or two ago on communicating a cybersecurity strategy to the board. Uh, and it was actually, you got to get it right down, make it very simple, uh, and but have a body of knowledge. I mentioned body of knowledge before. So for those directors or for those people who want to know more, there's there's material there for them to do that. But otherwise, it just needs to be a very high level uh, presentation if it's to a board or even to other people as well. The general uh, general public can sometimes struggle, you know, uh, in terms of what message it might be, or they switch off. So I think you've got to really keep it very simple, but then have uh, an avenue there for more information should they want it. Yeah, uh, and it needs to be easily accessible as well. But yeah, a cybersecurity strategy or a cybersecurity message, well, they're two very different things, but you know, you need to have uh, that uh, sort of overall strategic approach to your communications. Yeah, uh, And that should then guide you as to how you're gonna do it over time. Um, but yeah, keep it simple was the best, best sort of piece of advice that came out of that session. Uh, and again, from a board's perspective, again, uh, I said at the start, you need to know who your audience is. Yeah. Uh, go talk to them. You know, if it, if it is a board or at a high level, if it's an exec team, you might want to have a sort of relationship with them beforehand, see what interests they do have, uh, what keeps them up at night, 
uh, and then how that might relate. And uh, the other one was, I think the other one that comes out uh, a lot is uh, telling a story. Yeah. So if you can tell a story in a cybersecurity context, uh, that, that will also get their attention. And you don't have to tell the whole story first. You might just be sort of guiding them through an ongoing story. Yeah. Uh, again, maybe coming back to that maturity model uh, uh, and journey gets mentioned a lot too. It's a journey. <laughs> it's always a journey. <laughs> yeah. No, it's it's really good. And, and storytelling is. I'm glad you mentioned that because one of the one of the the you know episodes of the series I also want to do is specifically focused on the art of storytelling in cybersecurity yeah. because that's such a powerful concept. And storytelling doesn't have to be you know Hollywood movies type, right? You can have principles of incorporating that appeals to you know, different parts of your brain in terms of decision making. But Chris, one thing you did mention, which, uh, which caught my attention in your, in your answer was, you know, of, of keeping it simple, of having the conversations with the board. But when it comes to like the convergence angle, right, is the, the physical security, cybersecurity converging, and you're starting to see that in many industries now. How, in, in your experience, do you think the boards and the execs get it? Like, do they, do, they, do they also get the convergence and what that means and the implications? Or do you still think that's still evolving? Yeah, I think company directors tend not to care about the details. They, yeah. they have a very high level strategic view that, and they're there to make decisions for the strategic outlook. Um, they'll look at risk, uh, and then how that risk applies to their strategy, to their business strategy. So that's where directors are. I think executive management teams are a little bit different because they have to run the company or run the organisation and they, they should be getting it. But I think often you'll also find CEOs and the like might just palm it off to a CIO. It depends on what mm. the C-suite is, how it's structured. But, uh, you know, you, hear, you have a lot of CTOs and CIOs today Basically, they'll be the ones reporting, and CISOs, obviously, but they'll be the ones reporting on the, the security aspect, whether it's physical or cyber. So boards, that, and that has been the challenge, right, in, in terms of getting the board's attention, uh, allocating the required funds or setting the, the culture, getting the culture right from the board down. They're probably the key parts that you would focus on uh, for directors, because I most directors couldn't care less about cybersecurity unless um, they're going to get sued or it's going to affect the stock price or mm. they might not get a, uh, a a dividend this this year. So you've got to that story has to relate to what they know, and that is either what's the bottom line or what's the strategic outlook. And does that change? But I think, again, I, I, when I mentioned how security has risen to, to a high level of interest, that's why boards are more interested today because the, the, the landscape that they see is full of risk. Yes. And, and they're constantly hearing about this cybersecurity. It's ransomware attack or some sort of attack. You know, Russia's about to invade Ukraine. The first thing they do before they put a, a soldier over the border, they have a cyber attack. And it's exactly the same thing that happens in the corporate sector. Um, and, you know, if you're being looked at for, I don't know, a, by a competitor or you feel weak, if you have a security, a weak security posture, you're going to get attacked. That's the world we live in today. Yeah. And uh, I think they're starting to get it. Yeah. Um, and but I think the pendulum will always keep swinging, so we'll swing one way very strongly to cybersecurity, and I think we're seeing it already uh, in terms of then physical security gets forgotten, and then the pendulum will swing back, mm. and it will just continue that. And that's security, right? It, that's the why I chose the security field because I, it's uh, recession proof because you just you can't ever turn it off. It's always got to be on, and uh, that's that's the beauty of it. So. You, you're never going to have a point in time that you're 100%. Um, and I think that's something else that you need to be telling the board that uh, it's a journey. 
right? No, absolutely. And yeah. I think the, the key bits here and, and what I think the, the, the listeners and the viewers of this would benefit from is understanding, like from what you laid out, right, is if you were communicating to these stakeholders, thinking how they think, and that's yeah. what you're describing is how they see the world is different than how a cyber practitioner would see the world. Because our audience here is largely a cybersecurity practitioner audience or those who want to get into cybersecurity. So I think for them is really important to understand. And that's what I always maintain is if you are working in, you know, no matter which industry, if it's a private sector, just look at look at what's making you the money, right? Think there, like start with the product services you offer the customers, the stakeholders. If you're a government organization, what are your key services that you're going to yeah. deliver even before you start thinking cyber? Because that will help guide your thinking. And the more senior you are in the cyber leadership chain, the more important that is that you distance yourself from the technical bits and start thinking as a strategic advisor, because that's essentially who you are. So that's that's really good, Chris. Uh, the one thing which I'm, I'm keen to, and this is just uh, with your own, own journey, Chris, you know, in the transition from a practitioner to a communicator that you made, you probably uh, encounter a lot of different people in, in your interviews in terms of those who pitch to you. What advice would you give based on your experience as well as the people you interacted with, with somebody who's trying to develop their own personal brand in cyber, right? Like somebody who is a mid-career professional, all I started out is ambitious and wants to get known, wants to come on your show. What are the tips that you would give that person? Like we talked about integrity, we talked about messaging, but how do they get started? Because that's where a lot of people struggle. Yeah, I would. Well, uh, we have this little tidbits in this session uh, that they could pull out. One is being an author and and you know to to start to write and put those ideas down. And the last bit that you just said prior to that question was having a strategic view. So yeah. you do the same with your own career. And I did. You know, when I I even in my early 20s was I had an idea of what I wanted to do and I mapped it out and I used to you know remap that out all the time but um, it was things like getting a degree getting certified getting you know certain memberships certain networking groups I would go to um, and down to writing a book you know uh, th that type of thing was always on my list uh, because I, I would look at other professionals and go, okay, that's where I want to be. So you might do that. You could do, do it two ways. You can do it your own way and go, okay, this is where I want to go. Or you might look at someone you emu em em emulate and go, okay, that's that's the person I want to be or that's the role I want. And then you reverse engineer that and, and work backwards. Yeah. Um, the other one is the, um, the ASD's uh, skills framework. Uh, I think is also quite good. Um, and there's a range of those around, uh, but I, I would probably refer back to the ASD one particularly right. because from a site, but, but that's very technical as well. So are you a technical person or you want to be in the communication side or a GRC uh, kind of a person? Um, I mean, most would probably look at C-suite or CISO roles. Uh, again, that takes some time to get there. And yeah. then it's also what industry you want to be in because, um, yeah, but you talk to a lot of CISOs right now, they're under a lot of stress uh, and, you know, they have to do a lot. Um, and it's a mix of, of technical and uh, communication. So, and that's part of the debate as well. Can a CISO be non-technical minded? Mm. Um, and really at the end of the day, cyber and security is a business enabler. So you've got to have a business acumen, I think, to be a CISO, uh, whether you need to code or not, uh, you would build your team. And I think that's the, the, the change that's happened over the recent years where CISOs have probably been coming out of technical roles. They tend to struggle if they're, if they're very technical person, people, they might not have the, the sort of the human engagement skills there, or suddenly they're being got bombarded at a uh, c-suite or board level which can be a bit tough at times you know the things like bullying and mm -hmm. harassment and other things go on uh, at that level because they're very competitive people that's why they're there so yeah there's a lot of a lot of nuances uh, at at the higher you get up it's why I don't have a real job track I don't <laughs> necessarily uh, I don't like being told what to do and uh Sometimes that's why being a consultant is good because you can go in there, give them 
advice or a report and then you can get the hell out of there because <laughs> nah, look i yeah you have a very very real job but chris i think that that's a good you know it's a very interesting debate on on the role of the siso and i think the challenge also is the, the because it's it's still a newish role when it comes to the seniority aspect right it's been around for a while but in terms of how senior it is getting there's a lack of almost clarity on the expectations of the role like people yeah. expect it to be different things and there is not a clear consensus like a cfo a chief financial officer you you largely know what that entails a siso can be different things to different people and i think that's where the challenge is but i always view it as a, as a translator right can you can you translate from the the technical to the business the business technical and it's not for everybody and and i say that respectfully i don't think it's for everybody because some people are are very attached to the technology which attracted them to the industry in the first place and they're happy being there and certainly yeah. now put in a situation where they're so far apart from that I think is probably doing injustice to them. So I don't view cyber security uh, CISO as necessarily like something that everybody should aspire for. I mean, it's you, you got to go in with your eyes wide open. There are other ways you can reach to a very high level of seniority in the organization through a technical lens. But yeah. a CISO to me is is first a business person, uh, but who has a strong cyber background. You can't just have somebody, in my view at least, who doesn't understand you know cyber risk cyber security they need to have at least that ability to guide and shape the team which which inherently gets more respected if you come with some expertise and some gravitas to the role yeah i think it so, depends on the organization as well on what the organization needs and i think you'd probably be coming in from that perspective as well um they tend to be larger organizations uh that have sisos you know we're even getting down to ISOs and RISOs now yeah. Uh, yeah. in terms of business information security officers or <clears throat> sorry um, or regional information security officers. I also I've always been a uh, all encompassing for security. I don't like just doing cyber or information security. I think you need I prefer I, well, I would prefer a role such as chief security officer yeah. who can cover what we discussed in terms of physical as well. Um, and that convergence, because it's also electronic security, right? Yes. So all of the electronics and all the analog systems are now digitalized, and now we're moving into analytics. And it's not just data analytics, it's video analytics, behavioral an an analytics, um, and, uh, and the machine learning that comes into this as well. So there's a data, data science approach uh, also. So yeah. the role and capabilities of, of uh, a security professional uh is constantly changing and uh and progressing so absolutely you know you can't just go oh, I, I i know cyber and that's all i know <laughs> that's a bit of a red flag for me because uh or they try oh, if you don't know cyber if you're not technical you, you know you're not in the club uh mm, no because there's a lot of other things that are going to impact a a cyber environment or a, a cyber security strategy and the environment that you need to be across so ah, good points i think it is absolutely right i mean you you need to have an open mind to even like we started with an open mind conversation up front i think it is and it's what is fit for purpose for an organization i think that's going to be a key is yeah. the chief security officer to your point chris is becoming increasingly more common and it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a bit of a, a learning journey for, for people in those roles because it they doesn't started stop. from being a physical cyber. So it's like yeah. they suddenly are inheriting a whole different world which they were not yeah. familiar with. No, so, I think uh, if you're not learning every day, well, you don't have to learn every day, but, you know, if you think you're not learning anything, then uh, good luck on how long that will last because you've got to be <laughs> that continual learner um and it's why again why i do what i do because it, i've been able to sort of create this niche uh role where i get to talk to people and find out what they're what they're learning and uh that that's an ongoing basis and we cover everything yeah. you know whether it's electronics or you know the, the just uh i suppose the last couple of weeks has been really interesting as an example, we've we've covered everything from you know new electronic surveillance frameworks coming out at a uh, from the Commonwealth government, through to you know we've got uh, Russia and China uh, geopolitics playing out right now. Um, all of this relates to uh, a CISO for a large organisation. If they're not aware of what's going on around them and around the world, they're not doing their job. So you know all of this would be, and that's the trouble. Keeping up is the challenge now. Oh, it absolutely is. 
and that's where look i i personally encourage like i uh, my security marketplace is an amazing for uh, amazing place to go and explore things uh, i every time i go there like there's so much there yeah. that, that you can you can learn and, and equip yourself so it's it's really good uh, forum you built in a community essentially of a lot of people who use that and contribute to that on on the my security marketplace so i encourage the listeners to check that out i really appreciate chris you you joining me here it's, it's been always a great conversation and I, and I really like that you know when we when we look at look back at this interview there are some clear actionable tips that is what i was after is you know be it, be it the way you approach from a personal standpoint learning integrity community building from how do you get started with the writing? I think that allows you to form your thoughts. Beautiful. I think we've covered a lot of good points through this. So I'm hoping our audience gets some valuable insights. With that, thank you very much, my friend. And uh, to the audience, thank you for, for joining me and we will continue this talk series. And if you have any comments, feedback, please reach out to me on LinkedIn or on churagdjoshi.com. Thank you. Thank you.